So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we'll do our hands-on review of the Fujifilm X-T200. Do know you can find timestamps and links in the description down below, as well as the pinned comment, and that'll take you right to our full written review. And also know this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. Released in the spring of 2020, Fujifilm's X-T200 is their latest entry-level hybrid mirrorless camera to replace the earlier X-T100 released in 2018. It continues the tradition of compact, classically styled affordable cameras aimed at new users and novices, and this release blends an updated design with a more versatile overall system. On paper, it borrows much of the feature set from the X-A7 and the higher-end X-T30, and it now boasts superior autofocus, improved video, and a fully articulating screen. Yet surprisingly, it's even more compact and lightweight. Fuji aims this entry-level camera at newcomers to the ecosystem looking for a budget-friendly option. They also aim this camera to compete with Sony's A6100, Panasonic's G95, Nikon's Z50, and Canon's EOS M50. Today, we address its strengths and weaknesses, and we'll see how their latest entry stands up in this ever-competitive market segment. So, what are some of the goods, bads, and uglies of the Fujifilm X-T200? Let's start with image quality. It features a redesigned 24.2 megapixel CMOS sensor without an optical low-pass filter, a similar configuration as the X-A7. With this new sensor, Fuji opted to use copper wiring instead of aluminum, which increases the sensor's readout speed. However, the sensor does use their Bayer Ray construction, not the higher-end X-Strand design seen on their X-T3 and other cameras. Even so, the image quality this camera produces is excellent for the class, and it's a notable improvement over the X-T100. Images are sharp with ample details, contrast, and bundled with Fuji's acclaimed color science for a historic yet natural appeal. On screen right now, I will show a full gallery of some of the images that we've shot so far with the X-T200. In the description down below and the pinned comment, you can find a link to the RAW files so you can download these and edit them and use them as you wish. The camera obtains 11 historic film simulation modes to mimic the look of classic Fujifilm. It also obtains the new clarity filter and it has continuous shooting speeds of eight frames per second. Nice improvement over the predecessor's six frames per second maximum. And it provides a reasonable buffer of 20 raw images before slowing. On the video front, it obtains similar video capabilities as the X-A7, which represents a substantial improvement over its predecessor. With that, it now has full 4K support, shooting 4K UHD video up to 30p, and 1080p full HD video up to 60p. And the camera down samples from a 6K readout to create genuine 4K UHD video without a crop. The camera also offers competitive data rates of 100 megabits for 4K or 38 megabits for 10 1080p. Compared to its predecessor, which only provided 4K 15p video, these are enormous improvements, and the camera is now quite usable. Overall, the video quality it produces is excellent and closely matches the X-T30. Videos are sharp with ample dynamic range and natural color rendering, but they also have ample room in post-processing as well. But of note, the camera does have several time limitations to keep in mind. In this case, 4K 30p limits at 15 minutes per clip, and 1080p the industry standard 29 minutes and 59 seconds. The camera also obtains the full high-speed recording mode, which records full HD videos at 120p for five times slow motion in camera. Shooting in this mode automatically slows the footage down to 24p, and it's a nice change over the predecessor's four times or 100p maximum. However, you can only record for six minutes in this particular mode. With the sensor's new copper wire design, the camera now provides 3.5 times faster data readout speeds than its predecessor, and this added speed has significantly reduced the rolling shutter that occurs when filming in 4K, and it's a substantial improvement over the predecessor, but it's not perfect. It obtains the new HDR video recording mode, which combines several videos of varying exposure to increase the overall dynamic range. It's an excellent option when filming in tricky lighting conditions or backlit scenes and helps preserve more details in both the shadows and highlights, though this mode only works for 1080p up to 30p. 
The camera also offers the countdown video recording feature, which displays a video countdown while recording. It's a helpful option if you want to limit clips to a set length for easier sharing online, and you can have either 15, 30, or 60 second countdowns. And it also offers a clean 4K signal via HDMI out, and it can also act as a webcam when connected to a computer. For low light performance, it has a native ISO range from ISO 200 to 12,800, further expandable to a high setting of 51,200. These are the same values as the predecessor, but users can expect usable images up to ISO 6400 with minimal processing. For focus, with the redesigned sensor comes a substantial update to the camera's autofocusing system, and it now obtains Fuji's latest 425-point hybrid AF system with support to negative 2 EV. At 425 selectable AF points, the camera has nearly four times as many AF points as its predecessor, which only offers 91 points by contrast. Plus, these points cover 100% of the imaging area, further improving the speed and responsiveness of the overall system. Fuji's also enhanced the overall performance by placing on-sensor phase detection and updated both the face and eye detection algorithms, which have greatly improved its overall tracking performance. Additionally, they've also added the main subject recognition, which prioritizes a subject when shooting in large groups. Overall, the focusing is greatly improved and closely matches the X-T30 and X-T3, and the camera can confidently track subjects as they move across the frame, even when wearing accessories, and it rarely hunts before confirming focus. It also offers several focusing aids to help manual shooters. These include the focus check, the manual focus indicator, focus magnification, and peaking. For displays, it obtains the same 2.36 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder from its predecessor with a 0.62 times magnification. While unchanged, the viewfinder remains on par with the standards for this entry-level mirrorless segment, and it's reasonably sharp, accurate, and detailed. But new for this release is a large 3.5-inch vari-angle touchscreen LCD. Not only is it 16% larger than its predecessor's 3-inch screen, but it also boasts double the resolution resolution at 2.76 million dots, plus free angle articulation, and at 3.5 inches, it's among the most massive screens in this entire segment. While its predecessor's pivoting design was helpful, it pales in comparison to a very angle screen, which is ideal for the versatility they offer for both stills and videos. And it's also ideal for front-facing selfies or vlogging. Fuji's even added the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, making it even easier than ever to correctly frame videos. And they've doubled its brightness to 1000 candelas, so it's easily bright enough for use outdoors. Overall, taken together, these are substantial improvements improvements over the X-T100. The screen is sharp, bright, and responsive, and it's arguably class-leading at this particular price point. Since the screen's also a touchscreen, it provides several touch operations. These include touch AF, AF touchpad, touch shutter, pinch to zoom, swiping and playback, and full menu navigation. Fuji's made great leaps in touchscreen functionality here over its predecessor, and these are welcome changes. Like the X-T4, you can also adjust both the brightness and color, also known as white balance, for both the EVF and the rear display, which is helpful. From a user interface standpoint, this camera obtains Fuji's latest user interface and menus, which offer a new updated and modern look and feel over the predecessor. And like the XA7, they're also fully touch enabled. Overall, newcomers and existing users should find them relatively intuitive and quickly mastered. The menu items are nested further into the menus than before, but it shouldn't be problematic for most users. The camera obtains the advanced photography mode on the mode dial. This gives you access to the camera's advanced shooting functionality, for example, light painting, in one convenient location and saves time digging through the main menus. It also obtains the advanced filters mode on the mode dial, giving you quick access to the camera's filters. The camera also has two dedicated function buttons, function one and two. These buttons can also act as a focus or exposure lock for back button focusing. It even has two on-screen function buttons on the rear display, TB function one and TB function two, and you have access to 45 mappable options. Plus, there's also a dedicated function dial, which defaults to change exposure compensation, but you can also change it to control ISO, and it's context sensitive and changes various settings depending 
depending on the specific mode. In addition to the standard scene selection position on the mode dial, it now has the advanced SR Auto mode. This mode in particular offers a variety of automatic shooting functions where the camera optimizes the shooting settings automatically. It's an excellent option for beginners and novices that simplifies capturing high quality photos. Like other recent releases, both still and video settings are independent, making changes between these modes seamless. It also obtains the customizable My Menu setting from the XA7 so that you can save a preset menu of your favorite menu options, and it becomes the default once fully configured. Lastly, the camera obtains the Quick Menu, allowing you to customize a list of your most used shooting settings. Physically, the camera follows a similar design and retro aesthetic as its predecessor, but it's even more compact and lightweight, now weighing only 370 grams, including battery and SD card. And Fuji's managed to reduce the camera's weight by 80 grams, which is approximately 17% over the previous model, which is easily noticeable in hand. Yet despite reducing body size, it's clear that they've paid attention to the fine details. Not only does it remain attractive and handsome with its sleek two-tone finish, model and classic designs, but it also offers superior ergonomics over the X-T100, and they've protruded both the rear thumb rest and the front grip, making the camera far more comfortable. Frankly, the camera provides a luxurious grip for its size, and it's exceptionally comfortable for those with large hands. Plus, it balances quite well with larger lenses without needing an optional front grip accessory, which is something the X-T100 needed. With the larger rear screen, Fuji's also had to modify the camera's physical layout. In this case, they replaced the top function button with an on-off toggle instead. They've also redesigned the shutter button, which now has a wrapped command dial, but arguably the biggest change is the removal of the five-way rear D-pad. Instead, it's now replaced with an AF joystick, helpful for AF point selection or navigating the menus. The AF joystick also has an interesting press in feature where pressing it in zooms in on the current focus area, which is clever, but it also can act as an OK button as well, which is also great. Overall, Fuji has made substantial improvements to the design of this camera, and the addition of the front grip and protruded rear thumb rest greatly enhanced the day-to-day -day usability. Plus, the updated control scheme simplifies the physical layout without reducing the functionality. Like its predecessor, there's also a dedicated video record button for quick access whenever needed, and the camera has dual control dials to control shutter and aperture, depending on the mode. As far as niche features and extras, it features built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth LE connectivity to transfer images wirelessly, geotag, or remotely control the camera via the camera remote app, which works great. The camera also features the new digital gimbal function, a form of electronic stabilization that reduces shake. And the camera uses a gyroscopic sensor and software-based algorithms to determine the changes necessary. However, enabling this feature does come at the cost of a crop, as do all digital stabilization systems, Nevertheless, considering this is the first Fujifilm camera to offer this feature, it's quite helpful when filming handheld. It also obtains the digital image stabilizer, which is slightly less aggressive, but it's best suited for handheld static shots. An important note here, the digital gimbal mode isn't available when shooting in 4K, only 1080p, and it's only compatible with a limited selection of lenses. However, you can use the standard digital image stabilizer, which doesn't produce as much of a crop and allows you to shoot in 4K. The camera also has a built-in pop-up flash. It obtains the portrait enhancer, smoothing skin tones and textures for more flattering portraits. It has multi-exposures and the camera combines two separate exposures automatically. It offers the bulb mode to shoot long exposures, light paint, or record star trails. And the shutter mode remains open for a maximum of 60 minutes. It has built-in panorama. It has a built-in interval timer function to capture time lapses, and you can customize the number of shots taken. It obtains the time-lapse movie mode, creating 4K 30p or 1080p 60p time-lapse movies and camera. It obtains a new light trail shooting mode, first introduced on the XA7, to adjust in-camera settings specific to these images, and it shows you a preview as the exposure develops. It has a fully silent electronic shutter. It has a USB-C port, which supports charging, and Fuji supplies a headphone adapter with purchase which lets you monitor audio while recording and you can also adjust the headphone levels via the menu also of note the included adapter is well engineered robust and doesn't get in the way during use the camera also has a microphone input and you can adjust the levels via the menu enable a wind cut filter attenuator limiter or low cut filter these are substantial improvements over the predecessor which only offered a 2.5 millimeter port in comparison it also has built-in HDR. It offers the new cut and edit function, 
letting you trim recorded videos, reduce the replay duration, and the file size. This mode is ideal for sharing videos on social media. The AF Assist Illuminator doubles as a tally lamp when recording, which is very helpful. The camera obtains Fuji's extensive suite of bracketing options, including auto exposure, ISO, film simulation, white balance, HDR, and dynamic range bracketing. It obtains several lens correction options, including distortion correction, color shade correction, and peripheral illumination correction. It obtains the photo book assist, letting you create a book of 300 of your favorite images. It offers extensive in-camera editing, including raw conversion, red eye removal, rotate crop, and more. Let's talk about some of the cons with the X-T200 that we've seen so far. And let's start with image quality. Sadly, this camera doesn't obtain Fuji's full suite of film simulation modes. And strangely, they've decided to remove Acros, Eterna, and Eterna Bleach Bypass. And it seems this will be a separating characteristic between various XT camera lines. So if you want these particular profiles, you'll have to consider a higher end model. On the video front, this camera lacks several advanced video-centric features from the X-T30 and X-T3. These include zebras, F-Log, and 10-bit video. And while Fuji has redesigned the sensor on this camera, it does still suffer from rolling shutter when panning. Thankfully, they've greatly reduced the effect and you can easily correct the remaining distortion in post-processing. Battery life on this camera isn't great. It uses the long-standing W126S battery, but battery life is below average for a mirrorless camera. Fuji rates the camera to deliver 270 shots per charge under regular use, 450 when using the eco mode, or 80 minutes of continuous 4K video. Typically, 350 photos and 90 minutes of video are standard for the class. Like many compact cameras, both the SD card and battery live in the same compartment slot underneath the camera. And as always, this positioning makes quickly changing either of them tedious when using a tripod, a grip, or a gimbal. The positioning of the tripod thread also blocks the battery compartment, so you'll also have to remove the tripod plate to change either, which is always tedious. Due to size, this camera uses a smaller HDMI type D micro connector, which isn't the most reliable connection for using external recorders or external devices. It also doesn't offer the 4K burst mode of the X-T100. Instead, you'll have to rely on the camera's continuous high burst mode when shooting sports action in wildlife. And it also doesn't obtain the 4K multi-focus mode for focus stacking either. Like most cameras in this class, it lacks weather sealing, dual card slats, and in-body image stabilization. But as an entry-level camera, these are quite rare features and we don't expect them. The camera does, however, not obtain the movie silent mode from the X-T4, which would help prevent recordings from capturing camera setting changes. But overall, is the X-T200 a good camera for you? In short, yes. This camera is an excellent option for vloggers with its fully articulating screen, mic and headphone ports via an adapter, digital gimbal, and confident autofocusing system, and it's quite a package at this price point. This camera is also a reasonable choice for videographers, particularly run and gun or ENG shooters. However, it doesn't offer many advanced video centric features for power users such as F Log, Zebras, Eterna, or 10 bit via HDMI. For cinematographers or budding filmmakers, consider the X-T30 or X-T3 cameras instead. But for more normal day-to-day -day users, this is an otherwise excellent video camera for the price. With its eight frames per second burst shooting, it's a reasonably capable option for sports and action. But at only 20 frames before slowing, the buffer's rather shallow, so the X-T30 is a better option for sports and wildlife photographers. This camera is, however, an excellent alternative for those looking at the X-A7 if you want its viewfinder and manual controls. Otherwise, both cameras are largely the same. For current Fujifilm owners, this camera is an excellent B camera or traveling companion. It obtains much of the feature set from the higher end X-T30 without its higher end price. And as a package, it's certainly capable. Current X-T1 owners should absolutely consider the upgrade, particularly so if they want the updates to autofocus, video capabilities, better touch implementation, and improved ergonomics. The only slight loss otherwise is the missing 4K burst feature, but outside of that, this camera is a worthwhile upgrade. In the end, Fujifilm's X-T200 is a powerful camera in the entry-level segment and arguably the leader of the class. And it's a strong choice for beginners and newcomers looking to upgrade their smartphones. As a package, it packs several high-end features into a compact and easy-to-use system, and the improvements to the touch functionality create quite an intuitive camera. Overall, the X-T200 delivers considerable value for money and is a worthwhile and worthy consideration. 
So there you have it, my friends. There is our full hands-on review of the Fujifilm X-T200. For more information on this camera, be sure to look at our full written review, and you can find that link in the description down below or the pinned comment. I will also be doing some follow-up videos on the X-T200 as we shoot more and we have specific experiences with it. But overall, these are our thoughts on the X-T200. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. We will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Also, leave us a like and a comment in the description down below. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. Photography. <laughs>